You've done the drawing stage, now it's time to mix our colors. So this is stage two of doing your plein air painting. Let's look at the colors we have. So I'm using essentially a triad of colors plus um, a dark color. And that can be really helpful because um, you need to get darks. And in this case, I didn't really want to use black out of the tube. I wanted to mix my own uh, black. So one great way to do that is to mix burnt umber with ultramarine blue. And these are our two darkest colors, and this will give us a really nice black. I'll show you here. So if I take some of this burnt umber and some ultramarine blue, and I mix that up, maybe a little bit more ultramarine blue, you get a really nice dark uh, black, but it's called a chromatic black because there's still, you know, some color and chroma in that. And so this is this is a really nice black, and out of this you can mix grays too. As you can see, and I could say like, oh, maybe that's a little bit too blue. So again, I could come back in with some more of the burnt umber, and it'll neutralize and just give you a nice gray like that. So that's going to be my black. Now, uh, so burnt umber, ultramarine blue. This is alizarin crimson permanent by Winsor and Newton and cadmium yellow light and titanium white. So those are going to be the colors. Now, what I want to do is I, you can free mix your colors and just kind of mix as you go. But what I want to do is actually pre-mix my colors. So as I'm looking at my scene here, I see a variety of greens. I see green in the deep dark recesses of the shadows of the trees, sort of a normal foliage in shadow, and then a green, a lighter green, and then a highlight green. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mix up about I guess four or five levels of green. That first level of green is going to be very near to black. So I'm actually going to start with this mixture of black that I have. And then I'm going to add some of my light um, cadmium yellow light to that. I'm going to darken that way down. And I'm going to desaturate it with a little bit of red. Red desaturates green because they're complements on the um, color wheel. And so now I'm going to look at the darkest recesses. I'm holding this up and it's pretty close, but it still could be darker. So I'm going to bring some more of the burnt umber and some more of the ultramarine blue. See if we can darken that down a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more alizarin. And I'm basically checking my color. I'm holding that up again and it's close, but I still want darker. So more blue and more burnt umber to get us closer to black. It's just almost pure black, a little bit of red in there. What's up? That's pretty good. So that's gonna be for the darkest dark recesses that we have. I'll put that here. I'm going to clean my palette knife up and then I'm going to look at sort of the next level of greens that are in shadows and they're pretty blue. So I'm going to start with blue and yellow, but I know it's going to be on the blue side and I know that I have to desaturate that. That is just way too um, intense. Let me desaturate it with some of uh, this burnt umber. You can think of your umbers or your brown colors is really kind of orangey. So what that means, you know, an orange is a combination of red and yellow. So this will help desaturate it um, and darken it down a little bit, but it's not gonna desaturate it as much as using the crimson wood. And I'm looking at that. And actually this is far darker than, than I thought. I'm squinting my eyes to try and discern um, the value and this really could come up in value. I don't want to use white yet. Um, let's use some more of this yellow. 
see if this gets us there closer but I think I can raise it even a little bit more so you know in the previous video we were talking about how you have to make judgment calls and assess and sometimes you'll get it wrong and that's okay like you learn from each thing and you know we really start from generalities get better as we go getting more specific as we go I like that for my shadow color so I'll put that here clean off the palette knife and then let's go another step up so again blue maybe I'll just start with a little bit of alizarin into that and our yellow and we want something that's a little bit brighter and I think I want that to be a little bit more blue yeah I like that and then we'll have one more um, level of green which is going to be our highlight green and this is going to be a lot closer to yellow so a lot of yellow and a little bit of blue that is just about right so that was easy sometimes you know the more you do this the easier it gets and great let's look at trying to mix up um, our sky blue obviously and I'm going to have um, a lot of white and let's grab some of our blue there's all kinds of colors out there and we kind of talked about how you really have to learn how to experiment with your colors and you know I would have thought oh that's pretty good it's actually too light so let's add more blue um, I thought about trying a different blue sometimes I paint with Prussian blue or sometimes I use multiple blues but you know in this case I feel like ultramarine blue is kind of my go-to blue and um, you'll find colors that you like or and then you'll get bored with them and you'll want to experiment with other colors um, there's no rule that says you have to use a specific um, blue or for landscape painting or for anything like that you know it's a matter of taste to a certain extent um, and you can play around with style and it depends on what your priorities are, are you're trying to you know get uh, ultra realism photo realism there's going to be certain blues I think you know blues that aren't too um, green or certain blues that you know mix well with other blues that's one of the things I like about ultramarine blue but um, you know it depends on the season the lighting all of those things and so you kind of just pick um, colors that you like and learn how to how to work with them and you can make any color work um, but it's just that depending on the scenes that you paint you might find yourself um, having to do a lot more mixing to get the the hues you want and certain hues you know just can't be achieved um, certain colors in in nature cannot be achieved now I added some yellow into that because as the sky goes closer to the horizon it warms up a little bit and so I'm going to do a little gradation like that I think that that will work just fine and then I'm going to look at the clouds I'm going to compare with just pure titanium white and it's way lighter than that I'm going to actually put in a little bit of brown into that that was way too too much and maybe a little bit of yellow actually and maybe a tiny little bit of red that I'm seeing in those clouds they're not it's not just pure white but there's like a warmth there I'm 
No, not quite. Let's add a little bit of blue into that. I think I need to warm that up. So I was just saying, you know, that I'm going to use a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow. And then a little bit more white because when I add that brown, it's lowering the tonal value. I think that's, that's about there. So, you know, clouds aren't white. You don't want to get in the habit of clouds are white, sky is blue, grass is green. You want to look at the individual shades and hues and things like that and try to discern your colors that way. Think about getting your tonal values right and then your your you know your warmth and coolness and things like that all right i'm looking at let's look at um my sort of yellowish tone so i have um some yellow cream colored tones in the building and obviously in this awesome van and um in the uh light post electric pole here so i'm going to mix up a variety of tones and let me start with the darkest tone which is kind of the shadow under the awning it's kind of an orangey color let me start with some burnt umber and a little bit of alizarin and yellow And that's way too dark, so let's use quite a bit of white to bring that up. The yellow tones aren't that dark. Needs more yellow and more white. Maybe a little bit more white. Maybe a little bit more red too. It's orangey. I think that'll work. Let's get the part that are dappled in light. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown. It's kind of green, so let's add some more alizarin and some white. More white. A little bit more red in there. So I'm just need, I'm needing more of that orangey color and less of that kind of greenish thing that I've got going on right now. So a little bit more chroma, a little bit more white too. So, you know, it's, you could think about each time that I'm doing this and I'm missing the color, you could think of it as a failure but it's a learning process. I'm looking, I'm thinking, is this it? And the answer so far has been no. And then I'm going, okay, what can I do to fix that? A little bit more yellow and white. So let's just try the yellow. A little bit more white so it's tough it's tough to get color and you gotta just keep trying and not give up don't just settle for the first thing you try that's it got it pretty doggone close took a long time let me compare this to the car 
And when I'm looking at it, I'm comparing it to the car, I'm seeing that I need to, um, I'll show you what I mean. So when I hold this up and I compare it to the car, it's hard because we're in different, in different light, but I can see that it's redder, the car is yellower. And so that's an adjustment that I need to make. So we'll go back here and I'm gonna borrow some of this and let me compare that also with like the shadow side of the car. I also think it's too red, so I'm just gonna start by adding more yellow. For some reason, there's kind of a greenish essence that I'm seeing from this cadmium yellow light. But in this case, that's useful. I think it just needs to be slightly lighter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that. This is gonna be my shadow of the car. A little bit lighter. White will cool down yellows. Um, but I'm okay with that because this is in shadow. No. Needs more white. And more yellow, so I cooled it down too much. So all this is a learning process, right? Now it's too green, so I'm putting a little bit of that crimson. But that's going to, I you know, lower the tonal value. And it's too dark now. Sometimes you have to say it's good enough. I think I do want to warm it up just a tad with some more red. It's not that much different actually from the color we had before, but it's higher chroma. So I think we'll live with that for now. And now let's do the highlight side of the car. I want a little bit more color in that highlight anyway. One of the things, because I'm in shadow, um, it's hard for me to judge the values of my colors. I'm just going to I'm just going to raise arbitrarily the value here quite a bit. In dappled light, I think that's about right. Maybe I could go a little bit brighter.
because it needs to be different from the shadow side. So I'm content with that. But it does need to be warmer. Pretty good. I also need to do um, the white for the top of the Westphalia. And it's going to be not pure white. I'm going to save that for the sparkle. It's going to be kind of a, a grayish white. You put a little bit of this gray that we mixed up here into that. And mostly I'm going to look for tonal value. And it needs to be warmed up a little bit. Oh man. More white. It is pretty close to white. I think we'll have to live with that. Or you know what I could do? <laughs> Let me squeeze out some more white onto the palette. But there's a shadow side to that white part of the car, and it's going to be more bluish because it's receiving more of the reflection from the sky. Whereas the white part's warm because it's getting direct sunlight. So in a way, it's kind of on the orangey side too. And you can use color like that to delineate form. Like the fact that the light side is going to be, you know, a type of a bright orange and the dark side is going to be more of a light gray. So I want to push this as bright as I can get it. I think that will work for now. And then let's get kind of a cooler gray for that shadow side. And just by mixing, it's not going to be too dark, but we'll make that work for now. Okay, we've got our greens, we've got our yellows for the most part. Let's get in the browns of the building. Start with some burnt umber and white. Let's see what that gives us. Kind of a chocolatey color. When I look at the dark parts in shadow, I think it needs to be darker. Maybe add some blue to that to darken it down. Some of our black maybe. That's too dark. Because we don't want to compete with the dark recesses. Yeah, it needs more red in it. Maybe a little bit of yellow to raise the value. More red. More yellow. Because it is kind of orangey. Maybe I will drop in a little bit of white. Needs more red. There's a, quite a bit of color in there. Still not enough color. It's a lot of red in that. 
So I desaturated that color too much too soon. And I think I could use a little bit of white. Pretty good. So that's our shadow color. We're gonna have a lighter color and it's gonna be a lot lighter. I think it's gonna be a lot closer to that chocolatey color we started with. So we'll take some of our burnt sienna burnt umber I mean and some white quite a bit and this is gonna be the part of the building in light it needs a little bit of yellow added I should be just focusing on the uh, value first it's almost there I think it could be a little bit lighter And then I'll work on the chroma. Actually, you know what this color would be perfect for is the um, light post. It's perfect for the light post. So I'm gonna set that over here. And let me try that again. So burnt sienna, I know it has some red in it. A little bit whiter and a little bit yellower. That's it. Got it. Great. Mixing this shadow part. I think it's pretty good for a generic shadow and I can play with that a little bit more. And let's take some of that color and make a street color. Using the gray, maybe a little bit of this, some white for the parts that are in light. The part of the street's going to be pretty much the second brightest thing uh, other than the sky. So it needs to be quite bright, but I have a tendency for making streets and pavement and things like that, the ground plane, too bright. I think I could still go brighter quite a bit, add some white into that. Maybe a little bit brighter. It's crazy how bright it is with the sun going right on it. I think that's about right. I talked myself into it anyway. You know what we need is the tone for the roof. Uh, it's kind of a burnt sienna color. Let me use um, a little bit of burnt umber and ultramar uh, alizarin crimson. Some yellow. A little bit of white. It's close, needs more yellow.
Need a little bit more white. This is an angled slope, so it's going to be not as bright as the ground plane. That's about right, but not as. Um, it's going to be in between the ground plane and the and the vertical planes. So I hope you found this color mixing tutorial useful. This is stage two of constructing a plein air painting. We've done the drawing stage in video one. If you haven't seen that yet, click here. If you want to watch the next stage, which is the laying, the blocking in, and adding in the details, that's video three. Click here. Remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.